It was my wife's idea for me to make these planetary gear set rotating fidget toy door pulls for the sliding door here in my six-year-old son's bedroom. But uh, life's a journey, not a destination, and the process of developing these is even more interesting than the final result. So let's jump back in time. Previous owner of our house left behind this DIY clay door hardware. It's pretty nice, but it's damaging the opposite door and the hardware isn't long enough to make it through the entire thickness of the door. Not only that, my five-year-old kiddo has been slamming this, damaging it here, and bending it. So we need something else. Digging through my old archive projects, I found this planetary gear set that I made. And uh, it's not an STL, right? I can, I can modify this. So you can see there's a lot of wiggle in the teeth because this is printed in place and between each of the places where the gears need to mesh, I've made a 0.5 millimeter offset. So when you combine all that, you end up with like a millimeter and a half, which is way too much, but it does work and it spins quite nicely, which is fun. But the problem is that <laughs> it comes apart. So the plan here is to double the width and also I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit to reduce that 0.5 millimeter offset. And that's what we have here. Again, functions quite nicely. This time I can pick it up and it doesn't come apart, but you can see we've already skipped a tooth. So it is possible for me to bend this ring here and mess it up. However, I think we're on the right track as far as the thickness goes. So let's go put this uh, in place on the closet. And what happens when you slide it to the far end is that yeah, it can drop like that. So um, even if I get the tolerances right, that's still that large gap needs to be avoided. So we need to cram more of these orbiting gears into the assembly. So I've added two more of the planet gears into the assembly and you can see it does function. But if you look close, it's not quite right. These five planetary gears are not evenly distributed around the circle. The sun gear and all five planetary gears are the same size and they're all 15 teeth, which means the ring gear here has a 45 tooth profile. And because I have five gears, the number of teeth needs to be divisible by five. So 15 divided by three is, is, is five. And 45 obviously divides into five as well. So here we see a sun gear of 15 teeth and planetary gears of 14 teeth. And you can see that the ring gear does not mesh. The ring gear has to come to a certain diameter so that it can interact with the teeth and the teeth themselves have to be a certain profile. So there's just rules. You, you have to be factoring here. And factorization yields uh, 30 teeth there and 15 teeth there, which works quite well. And that meshes to a ring gear. And the opposite is also true with an even larger ring gear where we have a smaller sun gear of 15 teeth and planetary gears of 30 teeth but this only fits three gears in there and you still have a big gap which I'm not after so these look like my two options here uh, that are you know reasonably sized and will work to 3d print keep in mind that because this is being printed on an FDM printer I don't want to make the teeth themselves too small so I don't want to have extremely large numbers for factorization so this one having the closest distance in between the planetary gears themselves is the one that I will be going with. If I take these two profiles and I loft them straight up, then that would work. But as soon as I try to loft them at an angle, it looks like it works at first until you get a, a view from the side. Here, I'll make it more pronounced by uh, skipping not one tooth, but two teeth. It really does like hourglass in on the sides. So the solution in my CAD program of choice, which is Rhinoceros 7, is to draw a line between the uh, the two points that you want to extrude to. So that would be straight up and down, so it's the next tooth over. And you use a command which is called pull, and I'm going to pull that line to the, um, the cylinder. So now that I have that line on the cylinder, you can see this original line does not match up to the curve, so I'll get rid of that. And this curved line now can be used as a rail to extrude along that rail. Instead of making the hourglass shape, we will now match the cylinder. And that is how you make a nice cylindrical gear. And the reason you really want to do that is so that you can make a herringbone pattern. These cannot slide out. They are locked in because of the chevrons. This is where the loose fitting 3D print tolerance issue comes from. You can see the gear generating program in Rhino uh, draws the teeth such that they are touching. There's zero tolerance. But here at the tip of the tooth to the trough of the next tooth, there is in fact a 0.2 millimeter gap. So in order to tolerance this for 3D printing, I would want to leave a 0.1 millimeter offset here on the tooth profile there 
and there, and now we're going to have another 0.2 millimeters. So that is going to be 0.4 millimeters in the trough. And if I slide this forward here, that's where it's going to start to touch. And then that's 0.4 millimeters. These ones here are each going to move 0.4 millimeters. And that is halfway out of the groove. So if I had a larger tooth count, that would make my teeth shorter. And this tolerancing, which has to be an absolute number of about 0.2 millimeters I've found for, for good general 3D printability, then it might start skipping teeth. As it ended up, I needed to build a custom offset for the 15 teeth planetary gears. And here for the ring gear, I just did an offset. So it was really straightforward. And this is the three dimensional version here. We can see everywhere I go, there's about a 0.25 to 0.3 millimeter gap, which should be just right for tolerancing and making a nice functional gear set. Getting some high speed printing done on the Bamboo Lab Carbon X1 using some silk red PLA and it's been sitting out here in the humidity so it's not printing fantastically. The print is done. The stringing is because the filament is wet. <laughs> I built this crazy drill bit jig planetary gear holder to try and break everything loose but it still won't turn. It flexes a bit. The problem is that this silk filament has the worst layer adhesion. You can see that bubbling up right there where my thumbnail is and I could probably just yeah, you can just do that. So now I know I got the tolerances right because straight off the printer, I could see the gap there between the teeth. So the problem here is entirely from the stringing from the wet filament. If you listen closely, you can hear the clicks, the snap, crackle, and pop that is the telltale sign of wet filament. And you can clearly see that on the extrusion against my thumbnail. All the little pock marks are like popcorn kernels exploding, little bits of steam that ruptured through the filament. Conveniently, this came in the mail a couple of weeks ago. I've been sitting on it waiting for the right opportunity to use it. And this seems like just such hex to the zero. Anything to the zero power is zero, right? So does that mean this thing doesn't exist? And if it doesn't exist, how can it be a filament dryer that actually works? I don't know. Well, it certainly appears that they're going all out to give this thing an air of quality. This is a business card with a QR code and my serial number, I guess. Inside of it, we've got an internet of things, um, SD card, PCB of some sort. Back here is the heating element. You guys can see that there. So the wires are going up to that. And then up here at the front, I think that's gonna be like an LED pad. We've got some electronics hot glued to the back of that thing as well. Hello world. Well, it seems appropriate to turn this thing on. And we get the fan turning on. If we open up the lid, I can touch the heating element and it's automatically coming on. That's getting quite toasty though. So if it just automatically turns on and there's no interface screen anywhere, what do you think of a Dex? Well, I think it's kind of cool because it's a hexagon. Reading the actual instructions tells me all I need to do is load the filament in there and turn the power switch on and it'll do its thing automatically. Now it does have rollers inside of here and you can feed the filament out through a Bowden tube to your printer. That's a very useful feature if you're printing with the very hygroscopic uh, filaments such as like polycarbonate, which soaks that moisture out of the air in like four hours. So if you have a five hour print, by the time you get to the end of the print, it'll be wet filament. So this keeps it dry the whole time. That it will do the job without annealing the PLA. Remember that when you heat PLA up to its glass transition temperature, it anneals. And so that makes it more difficult to print with because annealed PLA does not like to squeeze through nozzles very well. There's seven more hours left until that filament is dry. So in the meantime, I printed up this test print out of some just random white PLA. I don't even know what brand it was. I just had it loose. It wasn't even on a spool. So just to make sure that my tolerances were right, all I had to do is give it kind of a flex and it, it works. So let's go test this out on the door. Well, that's a total winner. Yeah, look at that. Hey, Dax, why don't you slam that door open? Then you will weave them all. Drying that filament with the hex to the zero filament dryer here has so drastically improved things that I didn't even need to uh, flex this thing. It just started spinning straight off the bed as soon as I pulled it off, as soon as I removed it. And in fact, now the tolerances are too loose <laughs> from too, way too tight to too loose. You can see it sort of binds because it gets out of whack, it gets out of alignment, and then it doesn't want to spin so well. So 
One thing that is good because of the herringbone design, I can't quite press those out, but it just, it binds up the action, which isn't the greatest. Well, it works fine when it's installed on the door because your fingers stay in line with the door so you don't get any sort of sideways motion when you do it. But I think that we could bind it and break it. So go ahead, can you break that kiddo? No, I can't even break it, it's really hard to break. In the meantime, I have to go to, I really gotta go to bed, it's 8 o'clock at night. So this blue silk PLA has been in the dryer now for like 12 hours. I left it overnight and it's still warm. So there's no auto shutdown. It just stays on and keeps on drying the whole time. And after 14 hours, that filament is definitely dry and printing quite nicely. This warrants talking about. Silk PLA has some additive. It's not pure PLA. And that makes the layer adhesion terrible with silk PLA. You don't print anything functional. It's all decorative with this stuff. And I was trying to do a functional print years ago using this filament right here. Uh, it was a Chinese company that I reached out to through Alibaba, and I got them to make some samples for me. This has, I think, 50% anhydrous gypsum. So gypsum would be the stuff in your drywall, that powder. Anhydrous means you bake it in an autoclave for like four hours, and... The gypsum inside of the PLA makes what's called nucleation points. And the nucleation points allow it to anneal very, very strongly. And when it anneals like that, uh, it's now high temperature. After it's annealed, you can't melt it at normal uh, PLA melting temperatures like that. The problem is that when I stuck this filament here into my uh, DIY filament dehydrator, it annealed on the spool, and then I couldn't print with it anymore. So even regular PLA without the uh, nucleation point additive will do that. It will, it will. And so you can't dry it at too high of a temperature. And if you want to go back, I'll put a link in the description. This was a fantastic project from years ago. This, this dryer has served me quite well the whole time I've been running this channel. And I can dry like four rolls of filament at a time, so that's nice. Only one roll of filament, obviously, here on this one but it gets too hot, it anneals PLA. So this is my PLA dryer from now on. And obviously, despite the sort of classic wisdom in the 3D printing world that PLA doesn't get wet from the air, it absolutely does. Now, you don't have to worry about this kind of a thing if you live in a dry, arid environment, like say Arizona or California, but here in the southern Midwest where I live, it's very moist. Humidity's often at like 80, 90%, and it just wreaks havoc on my 3D printing. The same company that's selling the filament dryer here is also distributing or selling and making this PLAX antibacterial PLA. Now, supposedly antibacterial, what does that mean? I don't know. They could just put like 1% silver nitride in there and make it slightly sterile, ever so slightly more sterile than just normal PLA. I, without seeing some documentation, I'm not going to trust this for making anything like food safe or something like that. We all know that the problem with 3D printing is just the texture. It makes so many little tiny little orifices in the print for colonies of bacteria to grow and thrive. And then you'll get sick making utensils or cups or something like that on your 3D printer. So don't do it even with this. I don't I don't really know what you'd use this for if it's antibacterial. I started a Twitter account this year and I've been quite active over there. So go follow me at test underscore prototype. And as I was a big shout out on thank you to my Patreon supporters, you guys make these videos possible. I would not be doing this without your support. So thank you so much. I love you guys. Have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye. I'm the YouTube algorithm. You should subscribe to design prototype test. Ring the all bell and become a fiscal supporter by clicking on the links. As your benevolent overlord I'm telling you that it will make your life better. Rather than allowing me to keep force feeding you mass audience, vacuous content, you'll actually be shown the interesting stuff that most people miss.